So in this section of the video, what we're going to do is put the stuff that we just learned together, the if statements, the conditionals, the looping, and the indices, all together and try to do an example that synthesizes all of that information. And so the script I'm going to be writing is a little bit longer, but if you could follow everything that has been happening up until now, you should be able to see why everything's happening the way it is. OK? So we're going to do an example. Um, and to, uh, to, to actually build together this example, I'm going to show you one more command that is super cool and really, really quite useful. OK? So um, consider that you have dice. Okay, you're, you're playing a game, you're rolling dice, and it's a six-sided dice like normal. So every time you roll it, it's basically generating a random integer between one and six. Right? So I'm going to show you how to do that in MATLAB. And uh, there's a handy command, which is rand i, which stands for rand, rand integer. And if you call the command, uh, it needs an argument. So I can say I want one random integer, uh, uh, one, one random integer between one and whatever the input is. So if I say 6 here, it will give me a random integer between 1 and 6. And because it's being generated randomly, if I call this command over and over, you can see that it's giving me different random numbers every time. Right? So 3, 5, 5, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So every time I run rand i6, it's going to give me a random integer between 1 and 6, just like rolling the dice. Okay? So this command is basically equivalent to roll me a dice. That's six I did. Right? Okay. So now we're going to do a, uh, an example of rolling two six-sided dice. And I'm going to ask the question, is the sum of the two dice um, 5 or not? Right? So that's the question. So let's do it. Uh, so what we're going to do is say I'm going to roll the dice twice, right? And the first roll, the value of the first roll, I'm going to call roll 1, is rand i6. So this is going to be one random integer between 1 and 6. I'm going to roll it again. Say so roll 2 is another random integer between 1 and 6. And I'm going to ask the question, is um, roll 1 plus roll 2 equal to 5? And if it is, I'm going to display a message that says, uh, it is 5. And if it's not, I'm going to display a message that says, it is not 5. Not terribly illuminating, but I think it makes the point. All right. So that's it. This is a script, right? So it simulates one instance of you shaking up the cup, rolling two dice, and adding up the two numbers, adding up all the dots, and seeing if it's 5 or not. Right? So I'm going to run this script. And I just ran it. It says it's not 5, it's not 5, it's not 5, it's not 5, it's not 5. Keep rolling it. Oh, it's 5. I got a 5, right? So and, and you've, if you've played any of these games, you realize that this, is, this is not unexpected. You, know, like you, you don't get 5s that often, right? So keep rolling it. And importantly, because random integers are being generated every time I run the script, the output is not the same. It's no longer deterministic, right? Because I have these two lines here that generates random numbers every time. OK? Great. Now, what we're going to do is that obviously every time I run my script, something different happens, right? So I'm not interested in what happens when I run the script. I'm interested in the probabilities of what happened when I run the script. So what I'm going to do is simulate rolling two dice a lot of times, right? I'm going to do that by wrapping this whole thing inside a for loop. So what I'm going to do now is start modifying the script. And I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to have uh, n reps which is the number of repeats. And because we're on a computer and it generates random numbers really fast, so you can run through loops really fast, I can make this a really large number. right? I can make it 10,000. I'm going to try to roll the dice 10,000 times and see what happens. right? So next, I'm going to say 4i equals 1 to n reps. right? So read that as i equals 1 to 10,000. So I'm going to run this 10,000 times. right? Every time I go into the loop, I'm going to do a bunch of these things, right? So I'm going to roll it once, roll it twice, add up the two numbers, and see if it is equal to 5. And uh, if it is, I'm going to modify this part down here. I'm going to keep track of it. I'm going to try to take a tick. I'm going to say tick equals tick plus 1. So every time it is 5, I'm going to keep track of it. I'm just going to count how many 5s I get, right? And that's it. Now, if you're looking at this, you should be thinking to yourself, well, the first time you go in, OK, this works fine in the middle, right? Tick is some number. Every time you go in, you get a 5. You, you add 1 to the tick. But how does 5, how does, the, how does the code know what tick is the first time you go in, right? So when i equals 1, you roll two dice, you add them together. It's a 5. 
and it goes tick equals tick plus one. There is no tick, right? So another thing that's really important when you're running these for loops is you have to initialize the variables. You figure out what you're trying to keep track of, and you have to tell it something to start with. Otherwise, it doesn't know where to start. It has such conditions, right? So we can say ticks starts out as zero, because before we run any, any of these 10,000 experiments, the instance of the two dice rolling, uh, adding up to five is, is zero, right? So all right, that's it. This is it. Let's see if it works, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run an experiment. I'm going to run an experiment 10,000 times. Every time I'm going to roll two dice, I'm going to add them together and see if it equals five. And if it does equal five, I'm going to just keep track of it, right? So here we go. Um, and I'm going to click Run up here, and that's it. It's done. It's done the 10,000 experiments. So let's see what tick is now. Right? We initialized it at zero. It's done these 10,000 rolls, and now it's that number. Okay. And if I want to know the probability of rolling two dice and getting a sum of five, I can say tick divided by n reps, which is the number, the total number of rolls I've gotten. Right? And so it's 0.1118 in this particular case. That's it. I've just run 10,000 experiments and come up with a probability of getting a sum of five. OK? You can easily, obviously, do this uh, for all sorts of other things and ask different questions. For example, what is the probability that uh, you add up the two rolls and it's uh, greater than 10? Right? So I'm rolling six, two six-sided dices. The maximum you can get is two sixes, which is 12. So basically asking, what are the chances that you get 11 or 12 right, as a sum? So we can do that, um, and I'm going to run that. It's done, and my tick is 832, right? And tick minus uh, divided by n reps is 0.08, right? That's the probability of you getting something larger than 10. And if you change this conditional here, you can ask all kinds of questions, right? If you wanted to roll a 12-sided dice instead of a six-sided dice, you just have to change that six there, so you can generate a, um, an integer that's larger. Um, if you wanted to ask other questions, like what if you roll 10 dice and see what happens, right? You could also ask questions like, um, if I roll the dice 10 times, then what is the probability I won't get a single one? So that would be a good exercise for you to do right now, because you now have all the logical ingredients to be able to write that piece of code, right? I'm going to run, I'm going to roll, a, I'm going to roll um, uh, two dice, um, the two dice 10 times. What is the probability that I won't get a single one in that case? Right? You should be able to write a simulation, figure out what the answer is. Um, you can also reason through it using just thinking about probability and see if the answer you get computationally conforms to what you know to be the underlying truth. Right? And as you do more and more replicates, in theory, you should get closer and closer to that right answer. Um, and so that will be a, a good, interesting uh, exercise for you to do that combines everything we learned today, right? So that's generating random numbers, uh, keeping track of indices in large vectors, for loops, if statements, and counting and adding things up.